Kumusta kayong lahat? Welcome to Pinal Crossover, guys. Your host here tonight, Marky Mark. This is the basketball show for the Philippine community. Philippine community. My host right here, co-host, my fellow co-host, JR. How are you feeling today? Good, how are you? I'm doing awesome. It's going to be an exciting episode because our special guest for tonight, right here on my left, Mr. Ray. How are you feeling? I'm good, man. Excited to be here and um, just excited to share some good news and some good stories about oh, basketball, man. Okay. Exactly. This is why we're going straight up to his basketball story, guys. We're going to go right up to you, Ray. Yeah, tell us, tell us, you know, how, uh, if you guys don't know Ray, follow him. He is at Rice of Grind. Um, really cool. We actually met through, I don't know if you guys know, we were at a concert and we just met uh, just through the stands uh, about to take pictures. So, yeah. and I got to find out that this guy used to play basketball in the Philippines. So this is why he's here today to share his story about how he got started into the basketball community and how he started playing in the Philippines. So how did it all start for you? Tell us, you know, how did basketball started for you really at an, at an uh, early age? Yeah, so pretty much basketball started at the age of eight. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I was playing baseball, competitive baseball, and of course basketball is in the blood of Filipinos. Exactly. And my dad actually forced me to go to a basketball run. So it's like a bunch of titos running, um, you know, scrimmaging and whatnot, forced me to go. I didn't want to go, but I went. Um, I, I played all right, I, I had fun. He forced me to play in Philcan oh. uh, with the Gremlins, and yeah. um, again, I didn't really want to be there, um, but my first game, I, I was one of the bigger, taller Filipinos at the time, wow. and I did well, and that's where basketball started with, with Philcan. Yeah. Um, so I started off playing Philcan, the Filipino leagues, um, and then that was in, I was eight years old, so I was in grade five, grade six, and then come grade eight, I started playing OPA. Um, so I was actually part of the first Scarborough Blues um, OBA team to win the Division One championship. We're oh, the first wow. one in history. First one. That's cool. um, and I was actually the first MVP <laughs> in my grade eight year. Wow. So that just kind of jump started my basketball career and it kind of made me put baseball to, to the side Sorry. for a bit. Yeah. Um, from then, I, at the time I was recruited from MT and yeah. Vanier, the two rival schools, yeah. top schools at, in, in that time era, and I uh, chose MT. I was, I mean, I'm a Malvern kid, so I was born and raised in Malvern pretty much. Yeah. Uh, went to MT. Uh, oh, had Mother, some, Mother Teresa. Yeah, yes, Mother Teresa, or Blessed Mother Teresa now. now yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a great career there. Had a great, great teams there. Um, great set of guys, great coaches that um, actually molded me to the, who the man I am now, the basketball player I was when I, when I first moved to the Philippines and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, from MT, my last year, we won uh, AA OFSA. Oh. Uh, I mean, probably the one guy who still stands out right now is Jamie McNeely, who's assistant yeah. coach at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he, him and I co-captained that, that team, and we took it all the way, um, yeah. both in TDs and AFSA. Yeah. Uh, from then, I just went to York. Um, I, I walked on the team at York. Unfortunately, my last two years of high school, I was injured. Yeah. Uh, so my, I got a, some recruitment letters in, uh, from Canadian schools. Yeah. Um, decided to stay local and went to York. Uh, there was an empty connection there with Coach Oliveri at the time. Yeah. Um, so I went to MT, walked on the team. My first year, kind of redshirted, active, redshirted my whole year. Second year, an another injury year. Yeah. I was pretty much out the whole oh, year. Wow. So I was out from, it was probably September. I was back and cleared to play in December during the holidays. Yeah. During our two-day practice at, at York, wow. I tore my MCL again. So my That's knee. Tough. So then yeah. when I was ready to go back in January, I just out the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, the third year I walked on, got limited minutes. Um, yeah. That year, Toot, I don't know if you guys know Toot Roach at the time, all Canadian. Yeah. Um, he, he came on and he was a guard. And uh, we had a bunch of new guys, highly recruited kids yeah. that came out. So like, I, just, I, I was on the York team for about four years. Yeah. And I just stayed kind of redshirted, um, limited minutes. But... My passion for basketball is still there, and I think one reason I still had that passion was just playing Filipino basketball. Yeah. Um, you know, at obviously college times, there's no more OBA for us. It's just either you play college or yeah. you play men's leagues. At the time, men's leagues weren't that big either. Yeah. So I just continued with the Filipino community basketball, Phil Can, Philac, uh, tra traveled out to Saga and played in the FIBAs and, and even the Brampton leagues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated, uh, literally a week from my graduation, my convocation, yeah. um, I decided to go home to the Philippines and try wow. to pursue my dream, dream there. Yeah. Uh, went out there. Uh, my first couple years definitely was hard. Yeah. Um, 
you know, some of the guys I grew up uh, mentoring under and looking up to the JPs, uh, the Jeromes, the Deans, all those type of guys that might not get not enough credit for Filipino basketball here. Yeah. Um, you know, they kind of gave me the advice, you know, when you go out there, you just got to stick with it. You know, it's yeah. not going to happen like this. And, and surely enough, it did not. Yeah. Um, I went out there, promised a few things from different people, nothing really happened. So it was kind of like I was starting from scratch. Yeah. Uh, I got there in June, had a really good rookie camp uh, for the PBL at the time. Yeah. Uh, at that time, I was considered a uh, Phil Foreigner. So each, there's eight teams, only one Phil Foreigner team. Oh, I see. Um, so sp there's eight spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I went out there, had a really good draft, um, rookie camp. And my agent, Danny Spirito at the time, yeah. um, definitely said, give me a call. He's like, yo, oh, Ray, you're going to get drafted. Like, you yeah. are going to get drafted. Draft time came. Sure enough, I did not get drafted. Wow. So a bit of blow to my ego a little. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I thought I performed well enough in the camp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that same year, Saul came there. So Saul oh, was the import for Harbor. Yeah. Um, Harbor. Yeah. Uh, Gabe was yeah. out there, came with me. Uh, if you guys know Ryan Reyes, his cousin was out there at the same time with me. Yeah. Um, and then some of the other teams had their imports from the, f the year before. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was pretty tough to get into the PBL at the time there. Yeah. Um, I opted not to go to school just because school, I, honestly, I graduated. I was like, I don't want to be in school no more, you know what I mean? Too much school. Yeah, yeah. Um, but looking back, I definitely think, especially for the kids who want to try and make it out there now, uh, going the school route in the Philippines is probably the best way to get exposure. Your coaches at school are the coaches in the, in the D-League yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, they're coaches or part of the coaching staff in the PBA. Oh, wow. yeah, so I can see that, yeah. getting that exposure every day um, with one of those coaches will definitely help you. So, you know, again, I, I say this because it's, it's a, a topic really dear to my heart that mm -hmm. any kid who wants to make it out there, yeah. I want to help them. And, Give them sure. all the advice that I've learned firsthand. So mm -hmm. going to school is probably the best route. Mm -hmm. Unless you're, you know, you're a freak athlete, you know, like a James Forster. Although he did go to school. AJ yeah. Sergi went to school. Yeah. All those type of guys. Um, but, you know, it, that's the best way, to be honest. Best.